All right, Dr. Boysen, let's go ahead and talk about the umbilical site. All right, so the umbilical site, again, depending on patient position and how comfortable our patient is, we may change how we scan that umbilical site. So we're thinking, for example, if we're looking for free fluid, one of the key things we look for at that umbilical site, we gotta think about patient positioning and where pathology accumulates. So mm -hmm. in this case, we're looking for free fluid. If our patient is in lateral, as Penny is now, then we're gonna come back to that umbilical site. We find that simply by separating the fur, finding that scar from when they had their uh, ovarian hysterectomy in our female dogs or at that umbilical site in our male dogs. We apply alcohol after we've separated the fur. Again, we'll start with a marker towards the head. We come in at that umbilical site. Now, when we come in on that umbilical site, if our patient is in a standing position, we're gonna come in with the probe directed towards the spine, as you see here, because that fluid's gonna accumulate along the body wall. Mm -hmm. If our patient's in lateral, as we see now, and fluid is the question we wanna answer, we gotta direct that probe down towards the tabletop, where my fingertips are here, so we pick up that fluid in the gravity-dependent region. So always think about the pathology you're looking for, in this case, fluid, and where it will accumulate, and adjust your protocols accordingly. So I'm scanning now down along that uh, body wall, because my patient's in lateral recumbency. Mm -hmm. I'll rotate, or rock the probe cranially, and I'll rock the probe caudally, and then I will also fan at this location to increase the area I look at. Lots of intestine in this area as well. We don't tend to look at a lot of motility at this location. If you see it, great. It tells you that you do have GI motility there, but this area doesn't have as much contraction as the proximal GI tract. So we look for foreign bodies or abnormalities if you get good with ultrasound, but we're really looking for fluid, and we don't tend to pay a lot of attention to the intestine here. Mm -hmm. The other thing we'll look for here, Dr. Schlub, is gonna be the spleen. And there you go, we can see the spleen now, and we can actually follow that spleen. We can trace it along very nicely. We can fan and uh, sweep along that spleen, looking for any obvious masses or abnormalities. I'll say, just like the intestine, we haven't done a lot of research to say non-specialists can identify intestinal foreign bodies or abnormalities in the intestine beyond GI motility. We have not done any research to say what the accuracy of non-specialists is at identifying masses or lesions in the spleen, mm -hmm. but the spleen is there and it is pretty easy for us to scan at this umbilical site. Once we've done the long axis, again, we'll turn into the short axis just to make sure, again, we haven't missed any pathology. You see some nice intestinal loops here with some shadowing, no obvious free fluid, and then again, I can pick up that spleen. So that is our umbilical site, Dr. Schlub, essentially with the key component of looking for fluid, although we can also see intestine and spleen at this site as well. All right, binary question, is there free fluid at this site, yes or no?